this video, I will be talking about the library view. I'll explain the different node categories to you, and I'll give you some insight how to manage the display of the thumbnails and how you can set up your own files and folders for the library. So the library view is a fairly simple view. It's a resource browser that you can use to place nodes in your graph. So it shows you nodes that you can drag into your graph. There's a few different categories in here. I'm not going to go into uh, much depth on all of them. I'll give you a bit of an overview. First off, we've talked about the atomic nodes and the graph items before. There's two other sort of atomic categories as well. That's the effects map nodes for when you're doing effects maps. There's different videos about that. And there's also the function nodes, which should be seen as the uh, atomic function nodes. These are for when you're doing functions in, for example, a pixel processor or an exposed variable. Then there's also a few different categories here that uh, are fairly important. First off, I'll uh, talk a bit about the generators. Now, the generators are nodes that uh, are good for when you start from scratch. They generate a effect, an image, and you use these as a basic starting point. So if I, for example, grab these black and white spots, you see that they only output something. There is no input. They're only generating an image. There's two types of generators. The noises are mostly the uh, procedural noises, organic looking, random. And uh, there's a few different ones here. The, the main ones have uh, sort of standard names and there's the grunge maps, which are the much more advanced, much more, much slower types. So be careful when you're using the grunge maps. Next up, we've got the patterns and patterns are more the man-made geometric artificial patterns, things like a checker, a gradient, uh, tiles that are repeating. That's what you find in the patterns. Same idea again is with the noises. They generate something and they don't actually uh, allow it much of an input. Some of them do, but the main idea is that they uh, generate something. So again, you get only outputs in most of them. Then we've got the filters, and the filters are sort of inspired a bit by what we associate with filters in standard 2D editing software like Photoshop. Uh, adjustments comes, for example, from the uh, adjustment menu. There you have things like uh, contrast and uh, chrominance, clamp, you can invert colors, standard image operations are in here. Blending is the missing blending modes from the blend uh, atomic node. So these are the ones you would get in Photoshop that you cannot find in the blend node. Blurs are different types of blurs. So the standard blur is fairly low quality. You've got Gaussian blurs here, motion blurs, uh, image driven blurs. Channels is for swapping channels. You want to split RGBA, you want to add an alpha channel, you do that here. Effects are sort of a, an all round catch all category for lots of different things where you can warp and distort sort of special stuff happens in here. Normal map is all related to normal map for converting to or from normal maps to uh, specific um, maps that might have use in a material. Tiling is related to fixing up the tiling in an image. And then finally, transforms will transpose and modify your image in a few very special ways. Uh, the important thing to note is that all these filters they tend to work on single inputs. So a black and white image, they will transform that or a single color image, that sort of thing. The material filters are, they're different. They work on a full material. So there's a few different ones in here. Uh, one click, for example, contains only bitmap to material. And these, uh, the, they sort of mirror the filters, but they are for full materials. So if I look at, for example, the PBR utilities, base material is very interesting. It uh, generates a full material with all the channels. So if I use the one, two, three hotkeys, you can see that this base material gives me a full output of uh, base color, normal roughness, metallic, and all those things. If I take, for example, look at the blending and I add a material adjustment, then you can see that I can input a full material and perform adjustments and it will output a full material again. So these are much more complex. They work on full materials. Well, they don't have to be more complex, but you have to... Uh, you have to know what you're doing a bit more with these. Then we've got the mesh adaptive and mesh adaptive. If you've used painter before, it's very similar to smart masks or to generators. They are completely based on bakes. Uh, they will require a bake in one form or another, be it a position map, a normal map, a curvature. All of them completely depend on it. Uh, same with the uh, weathering, but the weathering also works as an effect on a material. So it will create a mask and then add rust at the same time. And then finally, utilities are a few very special ones to do things like uh, planar projection 
or for uh, selecting masks from ID maps using uh, mesh data and combining it. So these are sort of helpers for the rest of the mesh adaptive stuff. Then we've got the functions here. And the functions compared to the function nodes is where the function nodes are atomic. The functions are graphs built out of the atomic functions. So they will, they will contain a few of these simple function nodes, such as add, multiply, and do a more advanced mathematical operation. So keep, keep that in mind. We won't delve too deep into functions. I've mentioned 3D views before. Uh, these are HDRs that you can simply drag on the 3D view and you get a different environment map. And then we've got a small selection of PBR materials. There's not all that many in here. You see there's a few categories. Most of the time they contain five to six different materials. They're there to get you started, to help you out, or to use as a resource to uh, learn about things. Then we've got MDL resources and MDL. MDL is very specific for creating uh, material shaders. So we're not going to delve into that at all, but they are uh, they're tied to it. One thing to point out is the favorites here. Now the favorites is for any node that, from the library that you end up using very often, you can favorite them so they appear at the favorite category at the top. For example, in adjustments here, I really like auto levels, so I would select it and you can click this um, add to or remove from favorites button to add it to your favorites. And that way you can find it much, much quicker. So on the right here, you've got the thumbnails. You can customize this a little bit. You can always search uh, and it will search inside categories. So if I search, for example, for levels, it'll search and give you everything that matches this specific uh, search query. Now, these uh, nodes have a few different uh, attributes. We've seen that before in the properties view. Uh, if you hover over it, it'll give you a, s a small s uh, selection of info, the name and the description. Well, if you right click, it'll give you a little bit more. So it will tell you uh, the extension, uh, labels, you'll sort of get all the info that's filled into the attributes. You can also filter here by type. Now, compositing is all the nodes we would use in the uh, standard graph. Functions, I've talked about that before. That's either the function node or the functions. Effects map is only effects map nodes, so that's only three of them. And then MDL is only MDL nodes. I suggest not to use this often unless you really know what you're doing. You're specifically working on MDL, for example. Then here we've got a drop down where you can switch the uh, thumbnail size of the icons. I can set it to large icons. And this is especially useful if you're using the noises. They tend to be a little bit difficult to, uh, to read unless you're using the largest thumbnails. And then we've got a little button here to toggle the icon label. Makes it a little bit more condensed. If you don't care about the names, which in some cases like the noises doesn't really matter very much, you can turn that off and see only the thumbnail. So when placing something from the library, you can either drop it in the graph view here. Alternatively, you can also drop it in the Explorer and that will open the actual package from the library in your Explorer here. You can then proceed to open the graph and take a look inside at what's happening. Warning though, packages from the library are read only, so you cannot actually modify or save or uh, adjust this in any way. Suggestion is to simply say copy and in a new package, paste that graph and then you can just play around with this and do whatever you want. You can actually tell by the little lock icon here that I'm not allowed to change this. Finally, you can actually customize the categories in the library a little bit. All of these entries here, they are folders in which you can then add specific filters. There's two buttons at the top, three buttons at the top actually here. One to create a new folder, one to create a new filter, and one to edit the existing item. So if I add a new folder, this isn't actually contained in the information. It's just a holder to collapse or, uh, or expand. If I've got a new folder, I can click add new filter, and you add a search query here. So you can filter by type. For example, I only want to see bitmaps or graphs where the base name contains, uh, let us say, uh, levels as we did before. Once we've done that, my custom query here returns anything that is has levels in the name. So this is a way to add up your own uh, filters in here. Again, you can edit them in this way. And if you want to dive really deep into this, for example, you are customizing a studio setup where you're working with these projects, I suggest to read the documentation on this topic. So that's it for the library view. And uh, that was the last view that we're going to talk about. I hope you've learned something in this series.